you. Oh, I'm so glad we got it to work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How do you pronounce your name? Kaylin Bayron, is that right? That's right. Oh, wonderful. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Well, I'm Ivana, the novelette, and I'm so happy and excited to interview you today. Great. Nice to meet you. Thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on the, the It's My Instagram Live series. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm so glad that the, uh, I, hopefully, the fact that our last, our last little clip that we just did a second ago, it saved to my story, so hopefully it's a good indication that the whole interview was saved as well. Okay. <laughs> I've lost in Instagram. I've lost three of my interviews. Oh no! The abyss of nowhere. <laughs> and usually, what I like to do is record my interviews and post them on my YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, that will work out today as well. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. I'm so excited to interview you, the author of the Cinderella is Dead series. Yeah. Yes. Are you having a nice day? Yeah, it's, you know, it's going. Uh, all this kind of quarantine stuff is a lot, uh, but it's it's going. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. All right, I'll go ahead and get started on our questions. Okay. Okay. Um, so what did you want to be as a child, and was it an author? Um, you know, I've, so I've always um, wanted to be a writer, um, but I, I wanted to be a singer when I was a kid. That was my dream. That's kind of what I went to. I went to college for music. Um, and so I, I might still, I might still pursue that. I don't know. But, um, but I've always been a writer. I've always, um, you know, I wrote lots of poetry, lots of short stories, songs, and then later um, some fan fiction. So, um, so yeah, I've always kind of been doing both any kind of creative arts, you know, that's, that's right up my alley. That's wonderful. Do you write fan fiction like what pad or just upload them to your blog? I don't, I don't because, um, nobody should be seeing most of that stuff because it's just so bad. Well, it used to be bad. Um, so, <laughs> Um, yeah, some of those stories should never see the light of day. But, um, you know, it's, you know, I've always um, just kind of uh, just written as, as an escape, as, um, you know, as a kind of, uh, you know, just kind of deal with what's going on around me. So, yeah. 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 Writing can be very therapeutic and relaxing and a way yeah. to um, kind of center your thoughts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like that for me as well. Um, I've definitely been writing my whole life too, uh, but I only decided to uh, really, you know, pursue it. I wanted, to, I always wanted to create stories. Right. In, in my life. I always wanted to create stories, whether it was movies or in books. And I've been focusing so much on books now, and I think that that's you know a good way to 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 express my express my art. Yes. Yes, I yeah. love it. That's wonderful. So, what is a day in the life of Kaylin? It might be a bit different now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so right now it's just me and my family here at the house, and we have run out of games to play. We have we are not creative enough to think of something new to do after. It's almost been like thirty days for us here at the house. So, yeah. um, so it's tough right now. But um, uh, I would say you know, and I don't even know if after, you know, if there's going to be an after for all this, maybe our new normal will change. But, um, you know, I try to get in the words, I try to sit down and write um, in the morning. Um, and then usually leave the afternoons open for my kids and just, you know, whatever else I have to do. But um, right now, I'm just trying to get in writing wherever I can. I'm, I'm right in the middle of a big revision for my next book. And so it's, um, it's, it's tough, but, and my schedule is all jacked up. Like I'm up till three in the morning yeah. and yeah, I'm just like, what is going on? This is not my bedtime, but, um, yeah, it's, it's different now. Yeah. But. Very. I, uh, one uh, recently, I think last week it was, I, uh, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't know it was two o'clock in the afternoon. I yeah. lived <laughs> 7 p.m. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It's two. I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. And my kids are like, we're hungry. I'm like, wait a minute. It's not even dinner time yet. And sure enough, it's, you know, it's six o'clock. And I'm like, wait, I thought it was, you know, noon. So I'm, it's all messed up. But <laughs> just uh, 
taking it one day at a time. <laughs> yes, that's true. My sister lives in Japan with her family, and they have been on lockdown since February. Oh, yeah. Yes, they were on lockdown before any of America was. Right. So right. they're still on lockdown, and they're having an outbreak now, so they're actually restricting them even more. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we've been sending them care packages and oh, arts and crafts kits for her kids. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we we're trying to keep, we're trying to send them things to be, to keep them interested and keep them, you know, supplied and stocked on things. Yeah. 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 Very much trying to do that. Um, so what did it use to inspire you when you did get writer's block? Um, I think reading really gets me out of, a, out of, you know, if I do have times where I just feel kind of stuck, um, reading books um, that are similar to what I'm working on is really helpful. Yeah. Um, and also um, just, um, I think kind of stepping away is helpful to sometimes go do something else, something completely unrelated to writing or books. That's, that's helpful. Um, and that's, that's worked for me so far. Um, you know, fingers crossed that that continues to, to work for me. But um, that's, yeah, that's, that's uh, what my go-to is, is usually just other books. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that too. Um, that and music for me. Mm -hmm. Playlist on your, on your website for the Cinderella's Day. Yeah. That is so me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a playlist for each story I write and sometimes for each character in the story. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, that really inspires me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it gets all the juices flowing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, so in your opinion, coffee or tea? Ooh, um, coffee for sure. In the morning, I got to have coffee. That's like the first thing. Um, but maybe tea like later on in the afternoon or in the evening just to get away from the caffeine. But I got to have coffee first thing. I have a vanilla macchiato every morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to have that. I might have an Americano throughout the day as well. Yeah. Make my own vanilla syrup to go in, in them. Oh, nice. Um, okay. I'm going make my own cardamom syrup. Really? Spice. It tastes like Christmas. It's weird, but it's good. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I want a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I do like to have like chai tea or matcha lattes at night, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is the best TV or movie adaptation in your opinion? Um... Hmm. Ooh, that's a, well, let's see. So I love scary movies. And so The Shining was adapted, you know, to a movie um, with Jack Nicholson. And, you know, that was great. But there was another adaptation for TV. And I think it was in like 1993 or four. It was a mini series. So it was like four or five hours long. And it was so much better. Like it was just so, it, you know, I think you can do more with, you know, four or five hours than you can in a two hour movie. But the way that they adapted it, it was much closer to the book. And um, I, so the miniseries adaptation of The Shining is, is phenomenal. Like, I wow. love it. Wow, I didn't know that existed actually. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen it sleep? Uh, yes, I have. Did you yeah. like I did. Um, I thought they did a really good job. The book is is great. I love. I'm a big Stephen King fan, um, so the book is phenomenal. But um, yeah, and I think that Doctor Sleep got it uh, more right than The Shining did with the book. So so yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Awesome. I love um, from Stephen King. My favorite is actually Shawshank Redemption. Oh okay. Yeah. All those deviations from the short story that he wrote. Yeah. Like one of my favorite adaptations and the silence of the lambs yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> love those love those so much those are like top two favorite movies of all time for me yeah yes <laughs> so would you like to tell us what your book is about your series actually um well cinderella is a cinderella is a standalone with a potential maybe something else but for right now it's a standalone but it is a the hook for Cinderella is Dead is um, queer Black girls team up to overthrow the patriarchy in the former kingdom of Cinderella. So that's kind of the elevator pitch. Um, but so it's, 
it's um it's a story that kind of asks readers to imagine what it's like to live in a place where Cinderella uh, was real and where she's been dead for 200 years, but her story, the Cinderella story that we all know is the backbone of this society. It is a book that's required to be in every household. Young women are required to know it, uh, uh, to memorize it, to be able to recite its passages um, whenever they're asked to do so. And um, it's also a place where the annual ball is now a mandatory event. Um, so all girls who turn 16 have to attend the ball. And, um, you know, it's, it's really about how in this society, a woman's worth is determined by her connection to a man. And I don't think that that's a huge stretch from the way our society works sometimes. Um, and so my character, um, Sophia, kind of recognizes how deeply unfair that is. And, um, oh, I just see my, my daughter just joined. Oh. <laughs> um, but um, that's, that's kind of how revolutions begin, right? Like it's people ask questions and they start kind of questioning the way things have, have always been. So um, that's what Sophia does. And along the way, she, she uncovers some really terrifying truths about um, the society that she lives on and the story itself and the king who kind of rules over everything and even Cinderella. So um, the story deals with some heavy issues, but you know, it's fun and there are moments of, of levity and, and sisterhood. And um, you know, I hope that when people read it that they get kind of that sense of magic, of empowerment. Yes. I, I, there's so many things that stand out to me from the description of it. Almost like Cinderella has become a historical figure. Yes. Also even a um, almost kind of religious figure, having to yes. memorize passages. Yes. And so that's, that, was kind of, um, that was kind of what my intent was. And I, I hope that that's um, you know, I hope that that's evident from, you know, I hope I did my job as a writer, but, um, yeah. yeah, just kind of understanding that, you know, they have this story and that they're expected to follow it without question. And so I think that it's always good to ask questions, um, yeah. especially if, if the things that are, that are, um, out there are hurting you or the people that you care about, it's important to ask questions and, and, um, that's what Sophia does. Yeah, having, um, you know, blindly following anything is, is dangerous. It's yes. Super, especially if, uh, if it seems to be causing abuse or it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, um, it's boxing people into a corner where they can't speak up for themselves, even right. if they're being treated. Right. I love that. In the, back, in the backdrop of Cinderella being like a real life historical figure. That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. I love that. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they're over they're, they're all teen girls overthrowing the system yeah got it <laughs> yeah because sometimes sometimes you can't fix what's broken sometimes you have to tear it all down so, right yeah i like it <laughs> um, so do you there's so many there's so much symbolism in that do you plan your books in advance or do you let them develop as you write um i think it's a little bit of both um i definitely like to start with um with an outline, uh, even if it's it's very rough, kind of just bare bones, just yeah. so I can kind of have a roadmap for where I'm going. But that always changes. It always goes left at some point. So um, <clears throat> I just discovered um, Save the Cat. Um, for Save the Cat writes a novel. I don't have it right in front of me, but it's it's a it's a book on craft, and it has it has completely changed the way that I approach. Uh, writing yeah I I'm late because this is like everybody I wrote about it you know I tweeted about it and everybody was like yeah we, we've been on about this for a while and I'm like okay well I'm late but it's really good and it has it's really helped me with the plotting um, you know I think some of the things that I do uh, when I'm outlining a novel are kind of instinctual just because I read a lot and so you know you kind of know there needs to be action here or there needs to be you know uh, a false victory or you know something like you kind of know the beats but this just lays it all out and there are spreadsheets and which I love and worksheets and all kinds of things so um that's really changed my process so I think that 
you know, I always work with an outline, but it changes. And, um, and so sometimes I surprise myself when I'm writing, I'm like, oh, it's gonna go this way. And I hadn't even thought of that until I get there. So the flexibility is, is good. That's, that's, that's true. I always end up planning my stories out in, ahead of time, at least the majority of them. You know, I have to basically have like a map to know where I'm going. Right. But during the writing process, I might like add an extra twist here or maybe a side story of a, of a love interest over there or something like that. Or um, maybe change a character that I wanted to deem at the end to be, you know, uh, wanting to be bad and staying bad or something right. like that. <laughs> Me change along the way but I feel like I usually stay pretty consistent to my outline mm -hmm. and it kind of helps me you know where I'm going I've heard of Save the Cat but I didn't exactly know what it was yeah like, the name this name sounds familiar but I wouldn't have known what it was to even go look for it right same and so and I I didn't have the book um but I had heard about it and then um just kind of being at home and facing a really big kind of uh, rewrite um, of a novel that I'm working on. I bought it and I read it and I was just like, man, I, I should have did this before. I would have saved myself a lot of trouble. So um, it's great. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I got to look at, I got to look that up. Also, yeah. um, Rebecca McLaren, I think's book, um, her book, Word Painting, is a really good craft uh, writing craft book as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's called Word Painting by Rebecca McCracken or Claire or something like that. I love that one too. I have that one. Oh, okay. I'm I'm writing that down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. It's so good. So what does the act of writing itself mean to you? Um gosh. Well, I think um I think for me writing is writing is an act of resistance. Even if I'm writing something, you know, joyful, something fun, um, a, a picture book, um, you know, it's it's really an act of resistance because I've been told, um, you know, to my face that people don't want to hear stories about people who are queer and black at the same time. It's kind of like you can have one thing, but you can't have both, you know, these kind of intersectional identities are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, it's it, anytime I write something and that's, you know, that that's who I write for. That's who I am. That's who, um, you know, that's, that's what, what moves me to write. So it, it, so it always feels like an act of resistance to show that we're allowed to be in these roles, that we're allowed to be the heroes of our own stories. Um, and that we don't have to be relegated to side characters or, you know, the, the character who dies first or the, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be any of that. We can be front and center and it's, um, it's just as important and engaging as anything else. And we deserve every single opportunity. So, um, so writing to me is, is an act of resistance, but through that, it's, you know, it's a, it's a joyful thing for me to be able to do. Yeah, I definitely understand that. It's like, um, representation. Yeah. It's to show representation and also show you know the humanity and the existence of people like and that they are interesting characters with interesting stories that deserve to be heard too yeah yes i do indeed i agree um so what has been the most difficult thing about publishing to you and what has been the most fun um the most difficult part is the waiting so you know <laughs> you're you're waiting when you're when you're querying and you're trying to find an agent, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And then when you get an agent, you are, you know, maybe revising or editing. So you're waiting for that. And then you go on sub and you're waiting again. And even when you get a deal, there's still waiting involved. You know, it's like here, you know, you're you're getting a deal, but your contract is, you know, four or six months out and you're so you're waiting again. And so it's um it's a lot of waiting. But, you know, the, the things that you get, the payoff is, is worth it. But it's, um, it's a lot of waiting. So yeah. I've seen um, authors, you know, waiting 10 years even to get published. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, it's different for, it's, you know, that path is so different for everybody. And, 
it's, um, you know, I feel like even though I do a lot of waiting, um, <clears throat> I, I feel fortunate that I haven't, you know, I haven't had to wait too, too long. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, you gotta be patient. If you're going to be a writer, you have to have that patience, but, um, but it's, it's, it's worth it. Um, and I think that as to, you know, the other question of what is, you know, the best thing about it, it's kind of like, I get to create these stories and share them with people. And I get to, you know, I get to meet people, I get to talk about writing and, you know, and resistance. And um, I have this community um, now that I get to share these things with. And it's, it, it, um, it's really, it's really special. It's, it really feels, um, uh, it feels like a community of, of people who understand what you're going through and they're right there with you, you know, no matter where you are in your journey, you can, you can kind of relate, we can all relate to each other. So, um, so that's, um, that's important. And then also, you know, the readers, um, connecting with people who've read the book and say, you know, this, this means something to me is, that's all you ever want to do as a writer, right? You want to have somebody say, I read your work, and I, it means something to me. And that's, that's, that's been the best part. That's, I, I, love that because um, I think at least during that time when there's so much waiting, building the community, also building their community and building their, their fan base, I think that's really a, an important way to spend the waiting period. Yeah. yeah. And, and writing that next book, whatever you, whatever you're working on, like if you're waiting for something, just go on ahead and move to the next thing and start working on that because it's another waiting game with that too. So if you always have something in the pipeline, then you'll be all right. Like I have my uh, debut novel coming out uh, in the fall. Your your birthday October third. Mm -hmm. I was that was my due date. Was and it? I, <laughs> and I was actually born. I was my my actual my actual due date. I was actually I was supposed to be born on October third, but I was actually born October second. Oh okay. And, and that's the day I decided to uh, debut my novel, The Beckwith Brothers. Oh nice. which is in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. <laughs> so Libra. Yeah. You're a Libra. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Libra power. <laughs> oh, I wasn't familiar with the, um, the horoscopes, but what I, what I love is um, that the, the debuting during the fall and it being just, you know, um, spring right now, it gives me the opportunity to continue to build my community. And I've been trying to use that by creating, you know, courses to help other authors with their marketing abilities. So I do a lot of the creation of book trailers and things like that. Right. And, um, I've also, you know, written a short story that I'm going to be um, get, releasing to people to also bring in more community, uh, okay. more people to my community. And I'm going to make that one for free. Just oh, because okay. <laughs> joy. Yeah. This is something for people to enjoy during their quarantine, you know, kind of introduce to my writing style and all of that. And I think that, you know, the waiting, it can be so long, but at least it's something that we can use to introduce ourselves to more people. Yeah, for sure. When you first pursued publishing, what stood out to you the most? What form of publishing? Hybrid, indie, self-publishing, or traditional? Um, so I think that, you know, the, the dream for me has always been to be traditionally published. But, um, but I did um, self-publish some things in the beginning um, just to kind of, um, I felt like maybe that was, that was where I should be, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of information out there and, and um, it's a lot of work. Self-publishing is a lot of work. You're doing everything yourself. And so hats off, you know, to, to the people who are going that route, because it really is a lot of work and it doesn't, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I, and I just, you know, um, I think that, that uh, traditional publishing, publishing for me has, has been a goal, but it, but, when I self-published first, it really gave me, you know, more of an appreciation for um, the team that I work with now because they're doing all these, you know, separate individual things. Whereas when you're doing it by yourself, it's just so much. And so it really gives you a, a, an opportunity to kind of appreciate uh, what everybody puts into it, what everybody contributes uh, to the book. So yeah, shout out to my team at Bloomsbury because they are phenomenal and they, I, I don't know, they're, their support has been amazing and um, I just, um, I'm so lucky. My editor is amazing um, and 
they're just they're just great. So I really appreciate everything they do. And I think that having that self publishing background kind of let me appreciate that even more. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Because you know, the ins and outs of what they're going through right now. Right, right. It's nice to have a team though. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. I love that. Um, so what advice would you give to budding writers out there? Um, I would say uh, be kind to yourself because um, other people won't be. Um, you know, they say you have to have a, a thick skin. I don't know if that's, you know, 100% true. I think you should be able to just feel how you feel. But, um, you know, it, you have to be kind to yourself. Um, you have to be patient. I'd say um, just continue to do anything you can to improve your craft. Um, uh, also, learn who's, you know, whose advice you can trust and whose needs to be just set aside. There are some people who do not have your best interests at heart. And, you know, some of those, some of those, those things can be set aside so you don't have to stress yourself about it. But um Oh, also, I would say just like for somebody like me who's not super um, extroverted, I'm, I'm an introvert. Um, when you become a writer, I think you think I'm going to get to sit at home and I write this book and I'm alone and it's no, you know, everything's through email. And then it starts to, you know, publish your pub date starts to creep up on you and they and you got to go talk to people face to face. You got to go give, you know, a talk or, you know, a speech or and, and that that was kind of unexpected for me. I knew I was going to have to go out and, and talk to people, but like, if you're a writer, people assume you're good with words, you know, who knew, but, <laughs> um, you know, they're like, Hey, you can, you know, come and give this speech. And I'm just like, wait a minute, I don't know what to do. So I would say just be prepared for that kind of public side of things because you are going to have to get out there and, and talk to people and do, uh, you know, give speeches. And, you know, if you're doing school visits, you're going to have to be face to face with, you know, um, kids. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. And kids are wonderful, but they are, they will tell you exactly how it is. They have no filter. And I think that's great, you know, but you got to be prepared. So yeah, just be prepared for that. But um, right. Uh, yeah, I would say and I would say just keep going. Don't give up. Be persistent. Um, because that's the only thing that gets, you know, it's, it's a combination of skill and, but more like luck and persistence. You just have to keep going and you'll get where you're trying to go. Just keep going. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. It does, that's very helpful to us budding writers out there. <laughs> um, I know there's an author, uh, the author of the Red Snow. Uh, I don't remember his name right now, but he lives literally in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. Oh. It, pictures of the forest where he lives at and he said that little dot over there a little opening right over there that's where my house is <laughs> and I feel like I authors think that's the life I can have but the thing is he doesn't stay there all the time he yeah. only stays there are certain months of the year most months of the year but other times he has to go and do speaking engagements he has to do signings book signings traveling things like that not now but he used to yeah yeah <laughs> It's there's time to have to go out. The author of the Red Snow, I think his first name is Dean or something like that. He's really great. Um, so we are down to the last three questions. And I want to thank you so much for uh, doing this interview with me. Yeah, no problem. So what are you working on? Can you share with us what you're working on now? Um, so I have, I have a bunch of stuff um, on the back burner right now that's kind of you know I'm shifting projects around I have a, a I'm doing a big revision right now I have another book uh coming out a YA contemporary fantasy that comes out next year um that I should hopefully be able to talk about soon um I just finished a draft of a middle grade uh contemporary paranormal that hopefully will be the first in a series. So um, that, um, I'm working on that. I've written some picture books. Um, so I'm, um, I'm trying to just, uh, I'm trying to do it all. And so um, I have a lot of stuff going That's on right good. now. It's good to have your foot in, your hands in, in different, you know, area, genres and areas. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you familiar with um, Jake in the Box? Um, the author of Jake in the Box? Um, that, it sounds really familiar to me. Yeah. Um, 
maybe. <laughs> He's pretty cool. He does, he does, he does the same genre of uh, YA paranormal. Mm -hmm. Also own voices. Yeah. He's on Twitter. I, I can, I can, I can send you his at when we're, when we're done. Okay. Yeah. He's really cool. And he has a book trailer, everything. He's awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, he's a, he's, um, he's a, a black, queer, uh, male writer. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, he's awesome. I gotta get his hat, because I know exactly who he is. I just can't <laughs> him right now. <laughs> um, so, um, if you, if it was a perfect world, what would your ultimate publishing goal be? Um, <clears throat> I would just, I'd just like to see as much of my work out in the world as possible. Um, I have you know, the YA, the middle grade, the picture books. Um, I'd like to see all of those um, in the hands of readers. That's, that's really, <clears throat> that's really just my ultimate goal for, for everything that I'm working on right now. I just want to, I just want people to be able to read those stories and see themselves um, reflected maybe in a way that they haven't seen before or, or maybe just have another option um, because, you know, there's plenty of writers out here doing this, this work, this very important work. And so just being able to add my work to that kind of growing list, um, that's all I want. I want, I want to produce and direct movie and TV series adaptations of my books. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shoot yes. for the stars. Yeah. You know, go for it. My first one is a YA thriller, my, my debut novel, The Beckwith Brothers, and then I have all kinds of contemporary stories and, and, and historical fiction stories and sci-fi and thriller mysteries on the back, on the back burner. I, I, I do lots of genres, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and the final question, how can I find out more about Kaylin Faven and uh, you, all of your books? Um, so... Let's see, I'm at Kaylin Bayron on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can also find me at my website, uh, www.kaylinbayron.com. Um, what else? Um, I'll be at the Social Distance Book Fest on April 25th, the kind of a virtual event at 4 p.m. Eastern, talking about um, retellings. Um, my pre-order campaign for Cinderella, um, is up and going right now, so um, you can find information about that on my website. And um, Cinderella Z comes out July 7th of this year and will be available everywhere books are sold. Please support your indies, your local indies if you can. Go on indiebound.org uh, uh, to find local indies uh, or just order directly from them. Um, so, yeah. That's where I'm at. I put your at in the comments that we on the final, on the last comment at the bottom. And when I record this, as long as Instagram behaves, yeah, <laughs> <put> this <laughs> and post it on my YouTube channel. My comment will be the last one there, so your at will be up the whole video. All right, as long as Good. everything technolog technologically wise works as planned. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. It was such a joy to talk to you, and I love all of your information. I think it's going to be very helpful to budding writers out there, too, and it's very inspirational, and I'm going to love your story. Oh, great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And is your daughter's name Amaya? Amaya, yeah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Amaya, <laughs> thank you all so much. Have a great day. Stay safe and stay well. Thanks. You too. <laughs>